I'm going to take you through how to identify molecular models. First thing you need to know is the color scheme. This set uses black for carbon, white for hydrogen, blue for nitrogen, and red for oxygen. I find this easy to remember because soot is made of carbon, oxygen is carried in our red blood, and the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen and the sky is blue. And then white's just a neutral color. Okay. What makes a molecule organic is that it has carbon covalently bonded to hydrogen. Anything else is optional. So I've drawn this decision tree of how to figure out what molecule you're looking at. The first question is, does it have nitrogen? because of the models I've got here, only one of them has nitrogen. That is an amino acid. It has this nitrogen with two hydrogens, which is the amine group, and then a carbon with two oxygens, which is the carboxylic acid group, hence the name amino acid. If your molecule does not have nitrogen, so that was our first decision, that came straight to the end. If it does not have nitrogen, the next question is, how much oxygen? And we're not talking precise numbers, we're talking proportions. This molecule has a chain of carbon with just two oxygens on one end. This one has an oxygen for every carbon. Okay. Now, that gives us a very important difference in properties, because most of these oxygens are bound to hydrogens, that means it has polar bonds. The more polar bonds something has, the more likely it is to be hydrophilic, interact with water. The, a defining feature structure-wise of carbohydrates is that they have equal amounts, or close to, of carbon and oxygen. That tells you this is a carbohydrate. I have a couple of carbohydrate choices here. So to narrow it down further, you want to ask, how many rings does it have? This one has zero rings. Three carbons, three oxygens. These two both have one ring. One of them has five carbons and oxygens. The other has six. Both of these fall into, well, all three of these fall into the same category, which is monosaccharide, one sugar. This one doesn't form a ring because it's too short. It just can't wrap around on itself. So we have three examples of monosaccharides here. If it has two rings, one, two, it's a disaccharide. Anything bigger than that, you're unlikely to see in this format because typically we jump straight to hundreds, which is a polysaccharide. And so that solves our small carbohydrates. If we had very little oxygen, like these, we know it's a lipid. Lipids are hydrophobic. They have very few, if any, polar bonds. Each of these has just one. Now, how do we decide what type of lipid it is? Does it form a single chain where each carbon is bound to one other carbon, and that's it, everything else is hydrogen? Or does it form rings where it folds back on itself? This can be a little harder to identify in 3D. You have to kind of pick it up and play with it and discover that these carbons connect to each other in multiple places. That makes it less flexible than the single chain as well, which can kind of wrap up on itself. This single chain is a fatty acid. This is that same carboxyl group on the end as we had on the amino acid. That's why it's called a fatty acid. Okay. Whereas the one with the rings is a steroid. Differences in what else is attached around the edge will determine whether it's cholesterol or estrogen or aldosterone or any number of other 
steroid molecules. Now you can look more deeply at the fatty acids to find out if they are saturated or unsaturated. I didn't put that on the flow chart. I have three fatty acids here. The difference is in double bonds. Not the one, this is missing a piece, not the one from carbon to oxygen. They all have that, but between carbons. So this one has two double bonds here and here. If it has any double bonds, it's unsaturated. If it has more than one, it's called polyunsaturated. Then this fatty acid has one double bond between carbons. That makes it monounsaturated. And then this one has no double bonds between carbons at all. That makes it saturated meaning it's holding as many hydrogens as it possibly can. I do have one other item here, which is a phosphate group. This is non-organic on its own, but is often used in formation of other molecules. It's a part of a nucleotide, and it's used to make phospholipids, where a glycerol would attach to fatty acids on two of its oxygens and phosphate on the third one. Phosphate is charged and there's usually something else attached to it that has more polar bonds in it, creating a hydrophilic portion on a molecule that is otherwise hydrophobic and allowing it to talk to both types. 